Hey guys, welcome to yet another video in this Ski Master series. In the previous video, I wrapped up everything that I had planned for this game. But I had also said that if some feature gets highly requested in the comments, I'll surely consider making a video on that topic. And some of you were already asking if the game can be ported to mobile devices with touch controls. So here we are. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the changes that I made to this game to make it mobile ready. But before we start, I'd like to mention that in this community requested videos, I'll mostly just show what changes I made instead of writing the code live in the videos. This is because the code shown in the videos is anyways available in the GitHub repository linked in the description. And I think this approach will allow me to produce videos more quickly. So anyways, let's get started. Here, I already have the game running on an Android emulator. And if I try to play the game, the first thing you'll notice is that the text on these level selection buttons is all messed up. And if I start a level, you can see that the game's resolution is not ideal for portrait mode. But the major problem is that we don't have touch controls for this game. Like I can't turn the player character and I can't even pause the game. So let's see how I address these issues one by one. First, I had to find a way to detect if the game was running on mobile devices. And to do that, I added a static const boolean called isMobile in the Ski Master game class. This variable reads its value from environment at build time. This means I can control the value of this constant using the dart define flag to the flutter build or flutter run command like this. Now, I could have used the platform APIs and checked the values of platform.isAndroid or platform.isIOS for this. But the problem is that those values are not compile time constants. By using a constant variable, I can be sure that the tree shaking process will completely remove any dead code from the final build depending on the value of that constant. Ok, now if I click the play button, you can see that the level selection looks much better. And if I start a level, the game fits the screen nicely. Plus, I can also control the character using this on-screen joystick. Now obviously, I've added some extra code to make all of this work. But the important point is that all of that extra code gets stripped away from the final build when is mobile is set to false. Ok, so next, to make sure that the game starts in portrait mode and full screen, I've added these two lines in the onload method of this class. I could have added them under an is mobile check, but calling them in non-mobile platforms does not do anything. So I think it should be safe to call them without any checks. Next, to fix the problem with level selection screen, I simply change the cross axis count of grid view to 2 if is mobile is true. Otherwise, I set it to 3. Then next, to fix the problem with game resolution, I change the width and height of the camera in the gameplay class like this. First, I fetch the aspect ratio of the device using media query and game.build context. Then I use an appropriate value for the height based on the value of his mobile. This wasn't necessary, but I feel that in portrait mode, it makes sense to show a little bit more of the game area along the height. And finally, for mobile builds, I calculate the width based on height and aspect ratio. This can be done for non-mobile builds too if you want to avoid seeing the black bars around the game. But I haven't done that because unlike mobiles, black bars are more commonly accepted in desktop gaming for 2D games. Ok, next, let's see how to add the on-screen joystick controls for the player character. So, Flame comes with a built-in joystick component, which makes it very easy to create joystick controls. And if I go to the HUD class, you can see that I've added a member of type joystick component here. I also had to change the base type of HUD from component to position component because joystick component cannot be directly added to a normal component. It needs its parent to provide a size. Then next, in the onload method, I've initialized this joystick member. The important thing to note here is that the knob and background of joystick are made up of components. In this particular case, I've used simple circle components but you can very well use custom components to control how the joystick looks. And just to make it easier for you to see, I'll render the knob and background with full opacity. Ok, so after creating the joystick, 
adjust its position to be at the bottom center and add it to the head. And along with the joystick, I've also created and added a pause button at the bottom right using the head button component. For the on pressed callback of this button, I've used the on pause pressed callback that I get as an optional input to the head component. Back in the gameplay class, I send in this callback only if is mobile is true. And note that this is the same callback that we had used in the key callbacks of the input component. Okay, now you might have noticed that while creating the head component, I'm also sending in the input component if it is a mobile build. This is done because I wanted to update the value of H axis of input based on the movement of joystick. So if you remember in the input class, we process the key input to ultimately update the value of H axis. This H axis is later consumed by the player class to update its movement direction. Now since for mobile builds I am going to update the H axis using the joystick, I have added these not is mobile checks in update and on key event to skip all the processing in this component. And instead back in the update method of HUD class, I directly update the H axis using lerp double and relative delta of the joystick if it is dragged. I also had to make the max value of H axis and sensitivity public from the input class so that they can be shared between the joystick controls and keyboard controls. So yeah, that is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, hit that like button, consider subscribing to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one.